Well, hello. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> John, I think there's a lot to talk about, buddy. There's been a lot of critics about you lately. First to start off with Mark Coleman. Terrible, now terrible, it's Tank terrible. Abbott. John, you've got a you, you've got a lot of explaining to do there, Lucy. <laughs> the, 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 the list is long but distinguished. Oh man, the list is long but distinguished for it. sure. I mean, look, we're gonna go ahead and uh, give you guys John's response to the Tank Abbott stuff on the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, you know, we. <laughs> I, I just I want to just start off. I'm gonna let John, but I want to start off with this: is that, um. Th- we have over years, every person, they tell themselves something long enough. That's the oh that's that becomes their reality. And I can honestly say for myself, I've done that to myself several times. You know, <laughs> it's true. Um, you know, yeah. like you believe it one way. You believe it the way that, that you want to believe it, or at least that's the way you recall it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it may not be the way it really happened, you know, and if... <laughs> It's true, you. But you convince okay. yourself that that's the way it was, and that's the way you. But a lot of it has to do with the emotions on how you felt during that time, sure. and um, that's the way you felt, and that's what makes you or, believe that that's how it happened. I, but it's, alcohol ha- happens to sway you your go. fucking judgment in a lot. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I mean, some of my some of my stuff. Yes, it was alcohol. But, <laughs> but well, I'm just saying that. Yeah. Like, I, I'm gonna, when it comes to tank, yeah. Alcohol had a lot to do with swaying, you know, what he even remembers. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start off with he showed up at UFC five or six. Uh, no, the first time I ever met Tank was at UFC mm-hmm. five at the after party. Okay. Supposedly, and I, you know, from his story, and I don't know, I can't tell you if it's true or not. You know, he said that he was uh, supposed to get backstage passes, and and it was a little placard. It was a little tiny, uh, they would take in, um, what do you call that thing? When they heat press it in the thing, so it's like plastic over Laminate. Shape. Laminate, thank yep. you very much. Uh, so they would laminate these things that would say backstage or, you know, uh, say fighter on it if you were a fighter. Mm-hmm. And that's how you got to walk around with stuff. So, you know, it's, you know his story with uh, the Rogan's podcast was that First off, he met my wife, who was mean to him. First off, if you're not, if you weren't a fighter, you know, <laughs> there it is. That is that's Tank and my wife dancing. So that tells you how mean she was to him. Yeah. At the time. Okay. And so, uh, you know, he he has just come up with some things in his mind. What, what really cr- is amazing to me, Josh, is I don't give any thought about Tank except you know when I see him. And I've seen him, you know, multiple times throughout time. The last time I saw him is there's a picture of that. You know, I introduced him to John Hackleman because John wanted to meet him. Okay. Yeah, right there. Okay. That was at a Bellator event. And, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he had survived a liver transplant, a kidney transplant. He had a lot of problems. And I've never, you know, he he always believes that I hated him. I, I never hated Tank. That was not why, the case. Why do these? There was times I got pissed off at Tank. Why do these fighters think okay. that? Like Mark Coleman thought that you were out to get him too. Well, you know, it's one of the craziest things because it's like it's obvious. I live rent free mm-hmm. in Tank Abbott's head. Yeah, <laughs> let's just be honest. Build, All the stuff like condo in there, dude. There, I, there is. It's like it's a grand palatial palace. Yes. But it's like you know, the, I you know. I always look and say, hey, fighters want to find an excuse for something. Okay, go ahead. Find the excuse. I can tell you that, you know, there were, you know, one time I was pissed at him, you know, uh, that was at UFC 8, and that was when he threatened my wife. But his entire story of how it happened, absolutely false. Okay. Completely so false. So how did it happen then? Michael Vick here at BetUS.com. Get it all. Huge bonuses, great odds, a race book, live in-game betting, and a casino. BetUS, my online sports book and casino. Well, you got to figure when we were at UFC 8, that was the first time we ended up in court. So I was in court uh, for, I want to say, three days before the event because they were trying to shut it down. Tank wasn't fighting on the event. 
Hmm. Okay, but Paul Herrera was. Oh, and I want to bring this one point because he he says he's got some you know info info that I was trying to then you know why why Paul's fight went the way it went or whatever. Um, he says he says that Gary Goodrich had a tape of Paul and Paul's high crotch, and I will I do know that Gary's team and I found this out after you know did practice this move for a high crotch with him so he they could have had the tape but you know the whole thing is he's he's trying to say that i had this you know thing against him is why i let paul take extra shots that's the dumbest fucking thing i've ever heard okay i'm not because the truth is i fucked up okay and how i fucked up was i knew gary goodrich gary was an arm wrestler i was an arm wrestler and i knew gary had never been in a fight and since Gary had never been in a fight and I knew Paul was a good wrestler, <clears throat> I figured Paul was going to take him down. And in my head, I was like, well, he's going to take him down get on top of him. And I'm just going to move around here. And when he went to take him down, I just started to walk nice and easy. And you got to figure at the time I'd probably refereed 30 fights in my life. Okay. So <laughs> it's not like I was good. And Far I cry from the 150,000 you've done now. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, you know, I made, I made a mistake in thinking I knew what was going to happen. And I thought that Paul was going to be the one winning that fight. And I thought that Gary was going to end up on his back. Well, Gary did end up on his back with Paul in that crucifix and started landing elbows. And I was, and I ran a little quick to make sure, whoa, shit. And I stopped it. You know, Paul and Paul Herrera and I are friends to this day. Okay. I see Paul all the time, you know, love Paul, love his wife. You know, we always gotten along. And I've always told him, man, I'm sorry. He goes, John, what are you talking about, right? But, but was there a uh, a I was what did he say? I'm trying to remember what he said. It was uh, I was trying to to uh, curry favor. <laughs> I didn't curry favor is what he said, and it's like curry what? You know, you've lost your mind. But that's the start at UFC eight. Again, Tank wasn't fighting; he was drinking. And he was drinking stoli. Uh, throughout all of his things, he's drinking beer. I never once saw Tank drink a beer. He was always drinking vodka. Hmm. You know, I was on planes with him where we were sitting right next to each other. He's drinking vodka. I mean, a lot of vodka. Hmm. And uh, the whole thing that happened at UFC 8 was Tank had gone to a uh, gym that was in Orange, California. It was Franco D. Camargo's gym, and he had grappled with Alan Goes. And the whole story, and then there's, there was a tape, and it showed Alan Goes putting him into arm locks. Well, he's saying that, oh, he got an arm lock, and he put his fist up, and Alan was like, oh, hmm. no, but okay, whatever. You know, that's, that's your version of the story. No problem. But we had been in court. The show gets to the point where we can put it on. We're in the middle, of, we're actually far into the show where Alan was there for Joe Marrera, who got beaten the first round by Paul Varlins because it was this uh, David versus Goliath. And then Paul Herrera got put out in the first round as the David against Gary Goodrich. And we'd gone through all of the fights, then the semifinal fights, and there was uh, two fights left. This The... The matched fight between Ken Shamrock and Chemo, and then the finals of the the uh, tournament. tournament. And so that's when my wife, who was standing, my wife who worked for the UFC, she's standing at one of the tunnels to go to the back, and Tank is there with his girlfriend and a couple a uh, couple people. Dave Thomas being his manager, and. Uh, Tank, for whatever reason, will not say Dave Thomas's name now. I don't know why. So uh, he also calls me McCartney. So I'm going to just call him Davey. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, Davey is told by his uh, girlfriend that, you know, he she sees uh, Alan because Tank is pointing him out. And she says, go kick his ass. Go kick his oh, ass. And my wife hears it. And he, he says, hold on to my teeth. And he takes his because he's, he's yeah. missing his front four teeth. Gives, gives her the bridge, and he goes over that way. Well, his story is that oh, there was 
Allen and all these Brazilians. I will tell you, there was Allen. There wasn't any other Brazilians. Because I broke up the fight with Joe Hamilton because Tank attacked Allen. You know, he was drunk. Goes after Allen. I go and I, I go grab Allen, pick Allen. Joe is grabbing Tank and put, pulling him off. And so when that happens, my wife looks at Tank's girlfriend and says, why did you do that? We've been in court. They're trying to shut us down. You can't have these kind of things. And they're, they're going back and forth. And about that time, Tank comes back and the girlfriend says, she, Tank, she's, you know, she's yelling at me. And Tank gets that far from her face and basically says, I'll fucking kill you. Right. And it scared the shit out of my wife because she's thinking that uh, she didn't think that he was going to kill her, but thought at the point because he's sweaty mm -hmm. now at this time and he is filled with alcohol and breathing alcohol into her face. And he says he's going to kill her. I had no idea that happened. No idea at all. But uh, Guy Mesger, um, Trey Chelligman, they uh, saw something happen, go over with my wife and Tank runs off. And then they're looking for him. I go and I do the, the fights. I had no idea it happened until after the show. So that's what happened with mm. UFC 8. This tank started a fight for no fucking reason. It didn't have to happen. And it was because he's drinking. He's drunk. Yeah. And he was drunk all the time. So Campbell McLaren says some stuff on Twitter. He goes, Tank Abbott forgot to mention on Joe Rogan. He threatened John McCarthy's wife. Tank forgot to mention That's... quite a few nasty things he did, like Pat Smith elevator incident and was the executive producer of the yeah. UFC then. Um, Tank was hugely popular, but he was a sociopath. That's what Campbell McLaren okay. says. Uh, it, there seemed to be a lot of just, a lot of it, I think, stemmed just from alcohol. Uh, oh, absolutely. I'll give you an example. I mean, like, I was in Huntington Beach one time, and we were just having lunch uh, at this little spot there. I was with Rob McCullough. Tito joined us, this and that. And inside at the bar where we were having lunch, Tank Abbott sat at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By himself. Oh, yeah. Just having drinks. Drinking Stoli. I don't Lincoln know what Stoli. he was drinking, but I know he was just totally with ice. Yeah, he was just there at the bar drinking. Yep. So um yeah. it's it's sad because like I said, we, well, we want to remember our version of it sometimes. Well, let here, let me you know, Tank started off, like I said, at you know, he was at UFC five. Mm -hmm. He did uh he was drunk. <laughs> this is before he ever fought. He did go into the after party, and I remember he started you know, he's talking to Dan Severn. He's talking to Ken Shamrock. Uh, he, because Ken Shamrock was, uh, I'm trying to remember. He, he, Ken had had the super fight with uh, Hoyce mm -hmm. at USC 5. And uh, he's basically, you know, saying, now nah, you guys lie on the ground like pussies, yeah. you know, and things like that. And so, you know, and then he grabbed Jim Brown's hat. He did. You know, he remembers that at least and stuff. And so they just, they, they pushed him out. And it was like, who is that guy? You know, that was all it was. Then at UFC 6, and that was his first, you know, showing. And that's when he, he had the big knockout. <clears throat> he says this whole thing about, I was talking gruff, but in the fucking, you know, <laughs> voice. Or, you know, I don't know how he talks. Mm -hmm. And he asked about the gloves. Here's the first thing. No, Tank Abbott is not the first fighter to ever have gloves on in the UFC. Okay. Yes, Art Jimerson had the one glove. Milton Bowen, who fought at UFC four against Steve Jenham, wore basically the same type. It was one was Harbinger, that's what Tank wore, and Chuck Norris was what uh, Milton Bowen wore. And the whole thing is you had to have the bar removed because there's the metal bar for that bag glove. So if you wanted to wear the gloves, just had to have the bar removed and it would you could wear them. And so he says, you know, this whole thing about, you know, hey, can I wear these? And like, if you want to. Yeah. No, it's not the way things happen. It's like, yeah, you can wear them as long as the bars are removed. Yeah. That was it. It wasn't like, oh, I thought you're an idiot for wearing gloves or any of those things. It's like, but he wants to make up the story, make up the story. But, you know, when the, uh, 
when it came to it, hell, I'm the reason he got the name Tank. Mm. Please tell yeah. me that you had, we we had well we had Art Davy on yeah. on the show and stuff and I was sitting in Art Davy's office when Dave Thomas, who was the guy that Tank keeps on talking about, got him into it. Um, he called and Art had him on the speakerphone and he says, "I got this guy he's from Huntington Beach and you know he held bench press six hundred pounds and he fights in you know construction yards and and Art was the one saying, well, "What do you mean construction yard?" Right. And he says, yeah, he fights, you know, in construction yards, you know, down, you know, where the, the dirt area will fight anywhere. You know, he says, so what, is he like a pit fighter? Right. And he says, yeah, yeah. You know, and I said, so, so he's kind of like any which way, every which way but loose. He's Philo Beto and Tank Murdoch. And he goes, yeah, he's a tank. And that's how it wow, fucking happened. Interesting. So then Art Davy said, so we can call him Tank. And that's how he got the stupid name. <laughs> it's like, which he doesn't like, I guess. Yeah. So that's, that figure. <laughs> I mean, he still but, doesn't mind being called it. Well, you know, hey, it fit. It was great for him. Yeah, it worked. You know, it all worked for him and stuff. So I, I don't know. I look at it and it's like, you know, the whole thing he says about, you know, I, then he said he told Joe that I stood him up and I was the reason he lost the fight. Mm. Mark, okay, Mark Coleman had some stuff like that to be said. Well, you know, and this is the whole thing is the rules. Tank is responsible for certain rules. UFC six being. He's he's the reason that I said you can't fish it because he's sticking his fingers in Oleg Tartaro's mouth, trying to pull his you know his lips apart. So it was like you hey, can't do that. The only thing you can do to defend is bite. You can't bite. You can't do the fish hook. So he was responsible for that. That was his first show. I had to come up with the rules. You can't do that. Doesn't look good. But the show before that Gracie versus Shamrock, you know, if you go back and watch it. It was 36 minutes total, you know, 31 minutes before we stopped it the first time and then gave him a minute rest and gave him a five minute overtime. But it was the first 31 minutes was on the ground. And I, at the time I was not allowed to stand people up and I liked it that way. I didn't have to make any decisions. It was real simple, but because of that fight at UFC six, they wanted me to stand people up and I was trying not to stand people up. You know, it was like, no, no, if it's like that, you got to stand them up. If they're just laying there, you guys, they've got to get into action. And if you were going to think, okay, I got Oleg Taktarov on one side. He's a grappler. And I got Tank Abbott, who's got some wrestling, but he's a striker. He wants to knock people out. Who would complain yeah. the more about being stood up? But Tank wants, I stood him up one time mm. in, in a 18 minute fight. If that 17 minutes, somewhere like that. He got to because he's blowing snot bubbles on the chest of Oleg Tartarov. Okay, he's exhausted. The cardio king was upset. You made him stand up. <laughs> and he then he got caught in a guillotine from that point that Oleg ended up taking the slowest back take you've ever seen in your life because Tank just <laughs> laid there with his you know elbows on, and knees on the ground and and he lost the fight, but. The one thing that, you know, is is absolutely the truth. If you, from that point, Semaphore loved Tank mm. because the fans love Tank. And they wanted him to win. They tried to set everything up to make him win. You know, and I'm not saying that I don't think that things were done at UFC 6, but it wasn't done by Semaphore. It was done by a manager. Mm. I do believe, and I think Tank is right with this, that Buddy Albin, who was a manager of Oleg Tartarov and Anthony Macias, and Anthony and uh, Oleg faced off against each other in the semifinals, that Anthony threw that fight to Oleg so he wouldn't get tired. So he, so absolutely, Tank says that happened. Yeah, but it wasn't the company that did it. It was a manager that did it. Mm. You know, so, you know, conspiracy theory, yeah, kind of happened. It did, but not the way you're saying. Mm. So um, that was one thing that happened against him. It also happened again in the ultimate, ultimate, where he ended up going against Don Fry. But Don Fry didn't do it. It was a guy named Robert DePersia who did it with Mark Hall. And so, you know, shit happens. But he, he's sitting there talking about UFC 11. 
Okay. And that, oh, the fact that he was, he was taken out of the UFC and he was, he was put on hold because of my wife. Cause my wife went to Bob Myers and says, I'm done. I'm not going to have people threaten my yeah. wife. Right. And so Bob says, no, no, I'm, we're going to take care of it. <laughs> so, you know, it had nothing to do with me. Okay. I was like, well, if you, hey, you know what? You want to leave? You can leave. I'll, yeah. If you're not going to be, if we're not doing it together, then fucking I won't do it. It's mm-hmm. no big deal. And so, but it was my wife said, no, I'm not having, having it. So then Tank was not, you know, that ha- that happened at UFC 8. So he wasn't at UFC 9 as far as we were in court again. He wasn't part of UFC 10. And then he was part of UFC 11. Wow, he was out a long time. Okay. So the whole thing, we, you know, there was a letter. that We knew, my wife knew the letter was written by a guy named David Isaacs. We sat there and said, really, David? You're going to tell me Tank wrote this. <laughs> David was a Harvard lawyer. Yeah. Okay. So there was a little bit of a difference between the way Tank would write something and Isaacs would write something. So, you know, the big, the big difference was she said, fine, whatever, just keep him away from me. And then she ended up working with him all the time. You see, she's dancing with him. So mm. Tank had his ways of uh, getting people to, uh, you know, he would p- piss people off and then he would be good to him. It's just the way it is. <laughs> What is it with people that there seems to be like a sense of bitterness sometimes, like whether they don't, they're I, not, you know, they, I, they, as they get older, they don't like the direction of where their life ended up and they, I don't know. they feel the need to blame other people for their actions or how their life turned out or whatever happened in their life. I see it a lot. I don't, I look, I look at, you know, and I don't, I don't, I can't sit there and say what, you know, tank went through with a lot of his life i you know i can tell you this before you know i i I actually you know told tank hey you need out of a fight you tell me john get me out of here i'll stop the fight i'll say referee stoppage tko you you didn't tap and and i'll just leave it that way and he that happened okay and then he would you know oh no when i stop it you know he put on a big show and it's like you know, people boo me and it's like, okay, no problem. You know, and it was because, hey, he he, w- he was important for the show. You know, he, he got, he fought uh, Vitor Belfort and, you know, I stopped that one and he was fucked up. Right? <laughs> he, he looks at me and goes, that kid fucking fucked my life up. Right. And I go, yeah, he, I said, yeah, he got you. Mm. And Five seconds later, I was I was an asshole for fucking stopping the fight. It's okay, you know, it's all part of the it's part of the game, part of the act. I didn't care, but when you take a look at you know some of the stuff that you know is bothering him and stuff, you know, I, I you got to figure his record is 10, 10 wins, fifteen losses, you know. But I will tell you that at that Vitor Belfort before that fight. Uh, he names a doctor and he's right. The doctor's name was Robert Istrico. He says it a little bit different, but Robert Istrico, he was a good doctor. He was from New York. He was part of uh, USA boxing in New York. He handled a lot of the New York uh, boxing things. And he was a really good ringside physician, real smart guy. And I can tell you that (laughs) he brought tank in. I was sitting there with Istrico and, you know, they had to have their medicals and stuff like that. And they had to bring in their medical stuff. And he's, he says, you know, Hey, tank, I need to talk to you about, you know, your medicals. And tank, you know, he says, he goes, he says, you know, John, you want John to leave? Well, you know, and he goes, I don't give a shit. Right. And so I'm sitting there and, uh, he says, you know, look at, you see this, you see this, you see this. He goes, this is saying that your liver is shutting down. He goes, you're drinking too much and it's going to kill you. And Tank goes, it's going to kill me. And he goes, yeah, it's going to kill you. And Tank goes, so you're telling me to stop drinking, stop partying. And he goes, I'm telling you that if you don't, you're going to die. And you're going to die a young man. And he goes, so I got to stop drinking. And he goes, if you don't want to die. And he goes, well, fuck that. I'm partying on. 
I don't give a shit. And he walked out. <laughs> and so you know, that was the way he looked at life. Yeah. And it's okay. You know, that's his thing. One of the things that he says that I got to tell you, he said that I ran him. Okay. Ran to him. see that if, yeah. And the thing he basically said that I ran his rap sheet. Mm. You know, if you, if you get, if you get arrested, you're going to go into what is a, a criminal thing that all the departments database. you know nationwide database i never ran tank what first off it's illegal for me to do it okay and why would i okay i knew people that worked in huntington beach that knew him that said oh yeah he's a pain in the ass here that's the, that's the most i knew about him as far as you know running him okay i never ran him why would i do that but he's got these stories and he just puts the stories out he, uh, I was watching it, like, or listening to it and watching it in the car ride down to the game this morning, <clears throat> uh, to my son's game. And he looks a brittle old man. He looks like a brittle yeah. old man. And I almost feel bad. So do I. He doesn't look, look at anything. There, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. There were parts of that that I'm watching. It was hard for me yeah. to watch, you know, when he's, he's breaking down as far as certain things with his wife and everything. And, Man, I, I, I feel bad for him. I, and, you know, like that picture, you know, that I, he was frail, you yeah. know, and it's like, I can't tell you how many times I've been around Tank. He's never said a word to me as far as, you know, being mad at me. Yeah. I used to, dude, because my dad did not like him. That was one of the things that's the truth. And I, you know, my stepbrother worked at the UFC. And so we took a picture with Tank. And blew it up to this giant poster for my dad and gave it to him for Christmas. What a jerk. <laughs> I thought it was great, right? You know, I, I, I even told Tank at the time, hey, this is for my dad, right? He says, I, and I told him, I said, he just hates your character and you know, what you do. He goes, why? You know, I was mm -hmm. like, you know, because you're mouthy. And that's my, my dad's an old, old soul the way he is. So my, my dad actually got a giant poster of Mark McGuire and cut Mark McGuire out almost in the shape of Tank and plastered him up there had it in his garage forever that's funny but yeah so i look it looks like i'm standing there with mark mcguire but uh yeah he's got all of his stuff and everything i i saw him on the the, the rampage jackson uh thing he said that you know that uh he got cheated in the don fry fight because of the, the don greased his ankles tanks a, why you left because tanks a leg lock guy now <laughs> <laughs> you know and I used to look and I go yeah. if you watch Tank multiple times in fights uh, he he does that you know he grabs if he's in trouble he kind of grabs the foot kind of like he's going to bring it up and it's going to do something he did it in you know in, in multiple fights it's like you know it's not going to do anything but okay and he did it in the Don Fry fight and then he tapped and it's like hey you know I I truly believe, you know, it, the, the fact that he believes that the UFC, Bob Myrowitz, was against him. Josh, you know, it's the same thing with, you know, Mark Coleman. We asked, you know, Art Dave, and he went, are you crazy? They, they wanted him yeah. to win, you know, and they wanted Tank to win because Tank was popular. Whoa. You know, they, they, they would put him in positions to win. What happened with him at UFC 11 when he's complaining about that is, they gave him a first fight. It was a guy named Sam Atkins, who was a boxer. And Tank, you know, went through him fast because he took him off his feet. Jerry Bolander fought Fabio Grigel. So when he's sitting there telling the story and he's saying, look, if I beat Sam, then Jerry Bolander is my opponent. No, not at all. It's how would you know who is going to be your opponent? Because you got Fabio Grigel and Jerry Bolander facing off against each other. Fabio is... Obviously, world champion jujitsu guy, fantastic. Jerry Boander, and I've told, I've told you the story where he holds the the fence in that to keep Jer to keep Fabio Grigel on the ground, and he twists the cage all up. Well, he cut his hands all up doing it too, and he was exhausted from holding on to the thing and everything, and his hands were a mess. And it was Ken Shamrock who said he can't fight; he's done. Mm -hmm. So they went to Roberto Traven who was another jiu-jitsu guy, right? World champion jiu-jitsu. And Roberto Traven was an alternate along with Scott Ferrozo. They went to Roberto Traven first, and Roberto Traven said, no, I hurt my hand in my fight. 
That's why they went to Ferozo, and that's why Tank fought Ferozo uh, in the next match. And then he loses to Ferozo. He also said that was the first time they used judges. That's not true. First time they used judges, Tank was fighting, and he lost to Dan, Dan Sever. That was at the first Ultimate Ultimate. So, you know, all these stories. Not a lot of truth to them. You know, there's a semblance somewhere of he was there, and that's true, but not a whole lot of truth. Like, if you're having a hard time wrapping your head around this, if you guys were listening to this, think about this. <laughs> like, just to just to put to put it in perspective, they're trying to build a promotion, and let's just use bare knuckle fighting as an example. Let's yeah, exactly. let you know. Let's use them as an example. Your karate combat. It's perfect. <clears throat> what are both those promotions trying to do right now? I love They're it. trying to find stars. Absolutely. And they, they, bare knuckles. Do you think that Mike Perry is a guy here that in MMA, no one truly cared about, yeah. but bare knuckle in that situation, in that form, he's got that tank Abbott type dude. They, that's their star. Do you think bare knuckle fighting championships wants Mike Perry to lose? Have you lost your mind? No. Jesus. And like with Karate Combat, right? They're struggling to find somebody that can take over for them in terms of be a star. So, look, yeah. the fact that they had, you know, guys like, think about the history of the sport. You got Gary Goodrich, you got Tank Abbott, you got Mark Coleman, you got Hoist Gracie, you got, you know, you've got all these top level, got Ken Shamrock. <coughs> and they're going, sorry, they're going in history right now. Those guys, you know, they're, they're they've what helped shape the sport. Yeah. They were Tank looking, used to? Yeah, exactly. They're looking like, yeah. look, no one no one remembers the guys that they really fought. Being yeah. honest, right? Like yeah. outside of Hoist, like I don't remember any other guys he fought except for when he fought Ken. Like, I'm just being honest. Like, yeah, you were if I really think, you know, but right off the top of my head, I'm like, okay, who did he fought? You know, like it no, just remember you know, okay, he fought Ken. You know, and then like you know, and then when you look at like, you know, with the you just, you just realize there's guys that are there, right? That that they've helped shape the sport. Tank Abbott is one of them, and so I'm no disrespect to him whatsoever. Um, but he was a star. He made himself a star, you know, by acting crazy okay. and being belligerently drunk all the time. And it is, but that's what made him a star, and no different than um, you know, all the other. I mean, but it's also what has now affected his life yeah. in the way that it has yeah, that he, he's in this position. But it's like. You're the you decided to do that, you know. I, I do feel sorry for you know. I, I I hope he lives a long time. I hope you know him and his wife have a good life together and stuff. And he he hangs on. And I felt bad when you know he's like I said, you know, he's tearing up yeah. on the podcast. I felt bad for him. Yeah, you know, I really do. I have nothing against Tank. You know, the whole the, his his whole thing, whatever. Yeah, I could care less. Yeah. I, just, we, I think I think what the whole purpose of this was, you know, we had Mark come out and say something, Mark Coleman, you know, and then we had Tank say it on Jack's on the, another podcast, and then we had him come on Joe Rogan and say it, and there was a ton of people asking for a response. I think what the ultimate response needs to be is that I think all of us as MMA, true MMA fans, not, you know, not just casuals, we have nothing but respect for Tank. I mean, he helped lay the groundwork to get the sport where it is today. I mean, there's rules made because of him. You know what I mean? A lot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, you think about it, right? Uh, like, a couple. You know what I mean? So, th there's rules that were made in the sport because of him. And you have to admire the fact that he helped pave the way. They weren't getting paid a ton of money. You know, they weren't they weren't getting rich, you know? And so, uh, we're yeah. thankful for those for those pioneers that helped pave the way so we can make a living doing what we're doing. So, I got nothing but respect for him. You know, uh, I did. It does. It was hard for me to watch. Only because he looks so frail and we're so used to seeing him be this big mountain of a man, like just a, you know, I seen him walk through Huntington beach, you know, with the big beard and the, and it's, it's like, I remember those days and yeah. I saw him and, and even my wife was in the car. She's like, that's who she's like, no, it's not. She couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe yeah. it. She's like, that is not what I remember. I was like, no, he don't look like that anymore. That's him right there. Yeah. It's thunder. It's thunder. So. But hey, I wanted just to make sure we had a positive uh, take on it. You got to say your side of the story, and uh, I think I think it was a good rap. Good rap. I got like I have nothing but stories about him. Like I said, I was on a plane with him flying to Japan. He told the story about 
uh, he didn't, you know, he didn't say the name of Vitor, but he came up with the worm, but it was Vitor Belfort and I who were eating with him at that, uh, thing and stuff. But Tank was eating his share because there was Kobe beef and Tank loved the uh, fried fat from the Kobe beef. <laughs> so they both so, ordered extra steaks. And uh, so it wasn't just Vitor eating. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things. It's like, nah, it's the true story. You were both fucking going after That's it. That's so funny. Uh, it's a, you know, in the end, you look and go, hey, if, if it makes you feel better to blame me for your losses, go ahead, dude, because there's a lot in there, you know. But, uh, you know, hey. He was exciting. Uh, he brought a certain presence to the, you know, to the uh, sport at the time that I think helped galvanize people around the sport. So, you know, he'll always be a part of it. It's just that take some of his stories and the way he tells them, probably not exactly how it happened. 